Hey everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. So tonight in how to build an EVA foam Viking Axe part two, we're gonna knock off the rest of the handle, we're gonna assemble the iron head, we're gonna do the leather wrap around the handle, we're going to do some small details, some nail head details, some gouging, a little battle damage on the actual blade. It's gonna be great. So, if you're ready to hit it, let's make something. In our last episode, how to make a foam Viking axe part one, we reached the point where we had smoothed out our axe handle. Now we're gonna continue tonight with the start of how to build an EVA foam Viking axe. Part two. And now next what we're going to do, we've got it fairly smooth, is we're going to bring out our, <clears throat> excuse me, our heat gun. But be careful because these are super hot, super, super hot. So you get it going. Give it a few seconds to start warming up. And as you go over the foam, you will, right before your eyes, you'll see the foam tightening up. It might be hard for you to tell on the camera but you can, when you're looking at it up close, you can actually see the surface of the foam change. Very nice. Ooh, that really tightens it up. It gets rid of a lot of the grooves, gets rid of a lot of the gouges, really smooths it over nicely. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to building the ax head. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pay attention to this detail on the edge of the blade. The edge of the blade has a slight bevel. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're gonna take our knife that we've sharpened. We used our Kershaw sharpener, which helps so that we don't have to keep buying new blades. We can just use our Kershaw. Get our blade nice and sharp. Always cut with a sharp blade. It gives a really smooth cut, especially when we're gonna be doing something like a bevel. So what we're going to do is we're gonna to try to stay just on the inside of our Sharpie line, and we're not gonna cut at a 90 degree angle, because if we cut the blade straight at a 90 degree angle, the end of our blade's gonna be flat, but we want our end of our blade to be beveled, so we're going to simply tip our knife over to the side a little bit, and that's gonna give us our bevel cut. And we're gonna follow just to the inside of our line so that we know we get the exact shape we want. So we just set down, we just touch our knife to the table, and we keep our knife on an angle, Drag nice and slow, keep the knife tilted on an angle, and we just follow right along our line. And there we go. Look at that, nice smooth cut. Now we do the same on the second side, right through. Now look at that, nice smooth cut. Okay, now what we're going to do is, I like to use the box cutter for bevels and for long straight cuts, but when it comes to details like the inside like this, I personally like to use an X-Acto knife, which is a lot more a lot more pinpoint. It's a lot more accurate for tight little corners. It's so we're gonna stick our blade in, keep your blade straight up at a 90 degree angle, stay just to the inside of the line that you drew. And then we go to this corner. This is the detail area we were talking about. So we can stick our point in straight up. And then after we use the X-Acto knife for some of our tighter areas, if you want, you can switch right back over to for a long straight cut with your box cutter. And it's good to have a metal edge to line your cut up with. Keep your knife at a 90 degree angle so the cut is straight. There's half of our axe head. Now we'll repeat on the other half. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to glue our two halves of our axe head together. Okay, it's that fast, sort of. Okay, so what I like to do is just to keep my, my cutting board from getting all gunky and funky, I like to take another piece of white Bristol board or you can use paper or you can use a sheet of cardboard, but if you buy yourself a pad of Bristol board, you can use it for cutting out your 
templates for your build. You can use it for doing your gluing. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to glue our axe head. But what we want to keep in mind is this is going to wrap around the handle. So what we're going to do is we want to stick this part of the axe together, but we only want to stick it together right up to about here. So we're going to get the front part stuck together first because then we're going to have to go through the process of figuring out how long is it going to take to come around to the back before we have to cut it off. So we don't want to glue any of this part of the handle yet, we just want to glue from this part of the handle down to the end just to get the two ends secure. So remember when dealing with contact cement, you're putting contact cement on both sides of what you're going to be gluing. Okay, now we have both halves of our axe head glued. Okay, now what we need to do when we're sticking the axe head together is because we cut the bevel edge right on the front, we want to line that up to this edge and it's going to have to be perfect right on the money. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay this down here very carefully. We're going to line up the tip. Remember, once you touch it, it's contact cement. It is not coming back up. So you take it and you just slowly keep the rest of it from touching and you slowly line the edge up a little bit at a time all the way around to the tip. We line the edges up on this side right like that and if you notice we did this laying flat on the table so that the axe blade didn't bend so that it's completely flat when we stuck it together and if you notice now because of what we did now we have this little beveled edge on the end of the axe blade let me see if i can get there you go look at that nice bevel on both sides of the axe blade okay now what we're going to do next we have the front half of our axe blade stuck together. We left the back end of our axe blade open because this is what's going to wrap around the handle of our axe blade. And then what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how far around you go to the back to cut it off so that the two pieces in the back touch right together. Okay, so now we're going to make some marks on our axe head so we know what to cut and where. And you wrap it around the back and then what we're going to do is we're going to make a mark roughly where the center of the axe head is. So let's just say it's roughly right now, here. Since we have our mark right there, we're going to draw a straight line through it. We'll go inside the line, cutting with the blade straight at a 90 degree angle, and it goes straight through and comes off. And the back of this part that we cut is going to be dead center on the back of the axe head. Now we're going to measure around roughly for the other side to cut that so that we know that the two meet right in the center on the back. A little, a small problem has come up, which isn't really a problem. This is going to happen all the time, so it's good to know. You can see that there's a little tiny bit of a, of a raised edge there where the two pieces did not meet up perfectly. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our Dremel. And like we've talked about before, when you're going to Dremel, always use your dust mask because you do not want to breathe in EVA foam dust because once it gets in, it never gets out. So always use your dust mask when you're Dremeling. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Perfectly smooth now in the seam right in here. You can't even tell. Perfectly smooth. That's how easy you can fix a flaw with the Dremel. Okay, so what we want to do is, that here's our axe handle. Right here, this is dead center on the shaft of the axe handle. We're doing that because we want to make sure that our blade is going to line up perfectly in the center of the axe handle. Blue mark to line up dead center with our X handle so that we know that it's dead center in the middle of the handle. Since we're going to have to glue the X handle and we're going to have to glue part of the X head, we need to put our contact cement down. So because we want to know exactly where our contact cement is supposed to go, we're going to take our Sharpie and we're going to trace right around the edge of here. 
from that front line around to the back line and we're gonna cover it with contact cement. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna hold this part and we're going to contact cement right on the inside. We're going to stick it down very carefully. We're gonna line up with our Sharpie lines there and we're gonna push this first little part down. Now we know it's anchored in place. Now. Roll it around the ax handle, pushing so that our lines line up. All right, there we go. Now, as you can tell, we've got this is the second part of what we're going to do. We're going to take this side, we're going to wrap it, and then we'll make a cut down this side, and the two will go together perfectly. Okay, now as you can see right here, we have our two marks. Take our box cutter, take our metal edge, pull right through out of the back side. So these two pieces, the end of this piece and the end of this piece should fit together seamlessly. Okay, so now we're gonna be contact cementing foam together. We're going to trace around the bottom edge like so. We're gonna flip it around. We're gonna trace around the top edge like so. Now we know exactly where we need our contact cement to go right in this area here and on the back side of here. Get some contact cement right here where we drew our guideline. Now we gotta get the end of this half of the ax head covered. And we have to get this end of the ax head covered because they're gonna touch together and we want them to stick. And we're going to hit inside here. Make sure that they don't touch. You can either stick a piece of dry foam in between to keep them from going together. Okay, we've waited five minutes and now you have to be very careful because like we've talked about, it's contact cement. When it goes down, it goes down. So we've just lightly touched it and because it's contact cement, it's gonna hold it in place. Now what we wanna do is we wanna line this back part up so that this edge of this foam touches the inside edge of that foam. Sometimes what you can do is you can kind of Push it down right there, get the two to stick together, and then you can squeeze them together like so, get it all stuck together, and don't worry, this doesn't have to be perfect perfect because we're going to be covering it with the fake little plate on the back, but that's pretty darn tight, and squeeze everything together so you know it's all tight all the way around. Pow! That's how we do it. Okay, so now what we're going to do next is the small plate on the back of our axe head. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to cut out our small piece that we're using for the little plate on the back. Use your metal edge, straight down one side. Okay, it's going to go right there and then we're gonna have the nail head details on it. But before we do that, we're going to take our Dremel we're going to sand off the edges. We're going to round the edges off of the metal plate. And we're going to also round the edges off around the axe head. Have my dust mask on. Make sure you use your dust mask. I also have a smoother Dremel bit in. We used a super rough Dremel bit when we were taking down all that gnarly gouged out stuff on the axe handle. But now, since this is kind of a little more subtle, a little smoother, we're not looking to tear tons of material out, we're looking to just smooth an edge over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna round the edge off. Okay, now, it might be hard to tell because it's such a small piece, but instead of it being a sharp edge around the side, the edges are a little bit rounded off, just to make it look a little less like you just cut it out of a piece of foam. And now next we'll go around the edge of some of the edges of the axe head to do the same thing. Okay, so now what we're going to do next is we're going to contact cement our small plate to the back of our axe head. We're going to contact cement the back of the plate and the back of the head. But first what we're going to do is we're going to 
hold our plate approximately where we think we'll be sticking it. Let's just say right there. And you lightly just make a in slight indication where the edge of it will be, just so you can roughly know what you're doing with the contact cement. Now we have our piece that's going to be contact cemented, and we have our lines for the area we want to contact cement on the back of the axe head. Bring our glue pot in. There's the back of the plate. Both pieces are contact cemented. Now we give it another five, and we're on it. It's barely tacky. It's not shiny anymore. Use our Sharpie lines to be our guide. We tack it down lightly, and then we push it down firmly all the way around the edges, really tightening up. Really very, very, very cool. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do the two nail head details for the back of the metal plate. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our X-Acto knife in the end of our brass tube and we're going to scrape the X-Acto knife on a slight angle around the inside of the brass tube. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna sharpen up the edge for us. And then what we can do is we take our brass tube, we put it on a piece of foam, we push down and we rotate and we end up with a perfect little nail head on a thin two millimeter piece of foam. Two nail heads to go on the back of our metal plate. That easy. Foam, brass tube, sharpen it with an X-Acto, bang, nail heads. And for something small like that, I like to use super glue and I use Gorilla Glue. You can use whatever super glue you like. So what I do is I just put a real small bead on a piece of Bristol board. Now what I do is I just take my X-Acto knife, I just poke the tip of it, slightly rub the piece in the Gorilla, in the gorilla Glue so that it's stuck on the back. And then we literally take it, put it where you want it, hold it down, for a second or two and it'll bond. You can wipe off the excess. Another reason why it's good to wear gloves. There's our two nail heads in back holding on the metal plate. Next we'll move on to wrapping our leather strap around our handle. It's around. So what we did was we measured out a 3 8 inch strip of 2 millimeter foam. So what we're going to do is we're going to use super glue for this and we're going to decide where we want to start and we're going to start wrapping and we're going to wrap all the way around the handle until we finish. So what we're going to do is we're going to start just putting just a little bit on there, just a tiny dab, hold it for a moment till it bonds, that's attached down. Now we can start wrapping. Put a slight bead, and I mean slight, right down the middle of where we think we're going to wrap our strap. And then we're going to wrap this right over our strip of super glue that we put on there, and we're going to hold it. We're just going to follow the process all the way around the axe handle. Now we're up near the top, and we're going to round out at the top, and we're going to start going back down toward the bottom. We're going to wrap our last wrap going to come right around to the center of the back and we're going to draw a little mark where it cuts off. That's where we're going to end it and that's where we're going to put the nail head securing the leather strap. We simply cut it right where our mark was. We're going to stretch it tight right over our super glue stripe. Now, the last detail we have to put on here is we're going to put the nail detail on the end. So the same thing we did last time, we're going to place it over our two millimeter piece of foam. X-Acto blade to get it out. We find our spot we want our nail head, and there we go. That's it everybody. Looking good.
Okay, so now our last detail on our axe is going to be the gouge marks out of the blade. We've got gouges on all sides of the blade. We're going to do those with an X-Acto knife, so we'll get a real sharp X-Acto knife and put it in, and I'll show you how to do these simple techniques. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick the blade in on a little bit of an angle, and we're going to make kind of a wiggly cut. And then you stick it in the other side and you do a wobbly cut right to the edge. And then when you peel that little piece out, that's a legitimate looking gouge out of a steel blade. Very cool. See how it's uneven and it's deeper in some spots? That happens by sticking your X-Acto in at a slight angle and wiggling it around. So we're going to stick this in on an angle. We're going to wobble it around. Then we're going to come back on this side, sticking it at an angle, wobble it around, come back to the same point. And you just do that as many times around the handle as you want. And that's how it's done. Okay, so there are our gouge details. Nice. So there is the fully assembled Viking axe with details. So, that concludes how to build a EVA foam Viking axe, part two. Here is our Viking axe. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. So, that was it. We went through all the steps on how to build it. Um, hope you liked it. Uh, if you did like it, subscribe to this channel because together we're going to go through a lot of cool builds step by step together so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks again. Hope to see you next time.